So uh, I will talk about our integrated obesity management system. Uh, and uh, I have, since I'm a physician, uh, to reveal you my conflicts of interest. So I'm a practicing endocrinologist, but I'm, so, I'm also director of the obesity clinic uh, at the Sherbrooke University uh, Center and a member of uh, the Chronic Disease Prevention and Management uh, Committee of our regional health uh, uh, healthcare uh, system. And I also receive, of course, research funding to do my research and uh, perform some uh, work for a uh, pharmaceutical industry that should not uh, uh, have any impact on what I will tell you today. Okay, so I'm here to discuss integrated obesity management system. Probably you know that we are facing a diabetes and obesity epidemic. Uh, actually, at this time, there is more than 60% of Canadians who have either overweight or obesity. And what's very worrisome, as you see on the slide, is that the more severe obesity, class two and class three obesity, have more than quadrupled in the last years. And it's a big burden on uh, health system budget, almost 5% for direct cost of obesity. And this doesn't count the cost of comorbidities like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, etc. cetera. Uh, nor does it count loss of productivity or uh, social cost of weight bias. The good news is that there are very effective ways to manage obesity, and management of obesity is not only about weight, but also managing comorbidities, and we have a lot of evidence for lifestyle modification, for pharmacological therapy and bariatric surgery, and we have evidence-based clinical practice guidelines in Canada to help us go through that. The bad news is that these treatments are not yet widely available to Canadians who suffer from obesity. And I invite you tomorrow, I have a poster, we did an environmental scan of obesity management services across Canada, and in the primary care setting, only 35 practices registered that, as managing obesity uh, actively. I know there is more than that, but uh, I invite you tomorrow to our poster. So there is a big gap uh, between the knowledge and the services provided, and this is where we decided to uh, intervene. So our group in Sherbrooke has been very active for a number of years in developing interventions that would be applicable in the specialized uh, setting of the obesity clinic of the university hospital. And we have developed interdisciplinary lifestyle interventions that will help about 45 to 50% of the patients that we treat to lose a significant amount of weight and to have uh, health improvement. However, the access to these services is quite low and we have a two-year waiting list and all kinds of other problems. So this is why we, uh, we thought that uh, uh, we could develop uh, some interventions that might be uh, uh, less, uh, have less efficacy, but would be accessed by more people. And we started uh, working with primary care teams in order to uh, achieve that. There are many barriers uh, in implementing obesity management in primary care. There is some bias in health professionals. And although uh, now pretty much all physicians are convinced that obesity is a chronic disease, uh, less than half of them feel competent to treat obesity, and very few of them feel successful in in into obesity management. And uh, this will not make them engage energy into doing that. So the model that we uh, have developed uh, should help uh, patients uh, with obesity to self-manage with uh, the, the support and encouragement of the primary care teams uh, who will give uh, direct interventions to patients, help them access also community resources, and the role of the regional specialized interdisciplinary team, uh, like our team at the university hospital, would be to uh, uh, sometimes see difficult or more complex cases needing tertiary care, but also mainly support, coach, and train the primary care teams in order for them to deliver uh, effective interventions in the, in the population. And before we implemented the model, we did the excessive needs assessments with obesity experts across the country. We also uh, did the needs assessments with primary care providers attending CME events uh, uh, on various <coughs> subjects in, in our region and also uh, study participants uh, and we developed uh, evidence-based uh, intervention components uh, that, that I will show you a little bit later. 
We piloted the intervention with one family medicine group who volunteered to be very active in the research project and gave us a, a constant feedback to uh, improve, adapt, and upgrade the intervention before we started <coughs> sorry, implementing it. So in phase one of our study, uh, which was funded by a CIHR Physi grant, we uh, first did a pre-post evaluation of uh, <clears throat> health professionals, 25 physicians, and 13 nurses uh, practicing in seven family medicine groups. And uh, they were offered uh, different interventions component. The first and the main component uh, was two days of obesity management preceptorship. For those of you who don't know preceptorship, it's a learning in action. Uh, comprising uh, visits with real patients. So what we did is to have a, a half day of a very interactive discussions around the clinical practice guidelines and the different steps in obesity uh, management, including screening, identification of comorbidities, and treatment. Uh, also, we had real patient encounters with the participants, and we had clinical case discussions, and this would last two days. Uh, we also set up a virtual practice community with a website uh, that comprised the documentation center with the resources for health professionals, but also resources that you could pass down to patients, uh, discussion forum, and monthly webcast. So the uptake of the, the uh, intervention was pretty good. We successfully trained all of the participants, including, in fact, for two of the family medicine groups that were in the Saguenay region, about 500 kilometers away, we had part of the training as teletraining. There was an excellent satisfaction rate, uh, a good participation to webinars, a mean participation rate of 57%. Well, I have to say it's, it was very variable. In two FMGs, nobody never attended a webinar. And in two other FMGs, everybody attended the webinars at each time. And uh, one thing we noted was a very weak use of the documentation center of the website and the discussion forum. Some of the results that uh, we got was first uh, towards attitudes towards obese patients uh, was improved, especially for physicians uh, that you see here in blue. It started uh, on six on a scale of 10, uh, improved uh, to almost nine. The confidence to manage obesity was strikingly improved in both uh, nurses and physicians, and you can see that it was very low, below 5 out of 10 uh, before the intervention, was uh, increased after one month after the preceptorship and maintained a year later. And we could also see similar data for confidence level to uh, give nutritional advice, physical activity advice, and to treat obesity in children and adolescents. Uh, we asked participants to uh, uh, look at uh, their charts of 10 unselected patients before the intervention and also a year later. So what we found is that, is that there was significantly more reporting of weight, uh, readiness to change using the Prochaska's model, waist circumference after the intervention than before. However, there was no change in other indicators like uh, blood pressure measurement and medication use. And we asked them also to prospectively enter, of course, this is self-reported data, but to prospectively enter data, anonymous data, on some patients that they would decide to do weight intervention on. And you can see here that although there is an attrition, a pretty big attrition rate, 15% uh, of their patients had lost more than 5% of their weight uh, at the last visit which is a weight loss that is uh, significant and associated with uh, health outcomes, favorable health outcomes. At the end of the study, we uh, performed uh, semi-structured group interviews and we had uh, many conclusions from that. Uh, the participants uh, uh, were struck by the fact that they had acquired new knowledge and that they found that uh, it was very important that the learning was uh, in action with the preceptorship form. They really liked seeing patients during the training. Uh, they liked the interdisciplinary format also. They reported change in their practice. Uh, one uh, thing that was striking is that now they assessed readiness to change and would try to do the interventions in those patients who are in a stage of change that is favorable with improved self-efficacy for obesity management. They uh, appreciated networking with other family medicine groups. However, uh, they reported discomfort with the use of uh, information technologies and would have liked more in-person contacts. 
And the most uh, striking challenges for them were the lack of resources within the FMG, especially uh, since they didn't have dietitians, uh, lack of time, lack of time especially to complete the research-related tasks, and the complexity of the patient situations. So briefly, because I only have two and a half minutes left, <laughs> We have now embarked in phase two of our, our trial, which is a pragmatic uh, randomized control trial evaluating uh, health professionals in 10 uh, family medicine groups uh, and 460 of their patients. And we have just completed the recruitment of the patients for that study. Uh, the evaluated outcomes will be, of course, broader. We will still continue to look at organizational changes, health professional changes, but also a lot of patient outcomes like satisfaction, uh, measurements of anthropometry, metabolic uh, lifestyle indicators, but also received care with uh, ch extensive chart reviews. And we will have a peek at cost effectiveness indicators using qualities and cost uh, description. We have kept the intervention pretty much the same, but learning from the phase one study, we have added on-site coaching of the teams, so we have a, a dietitian or kinesiologist go quarterly in, in the family medicine group to coach them, but also to coach them on the use of the website and the discussion forum and the IT, since they were not comfortable doing that. So uh, challenges that we uh, have seen are so sometimes often also opportunities. The first, the diversity of practice context, and this is why it's very important to have uh, um, interventions that are adaptable and flexible uh, that uh, the FMGs could apply in their own context. Uh, you will, I'm smiling a little bit because when we first started this intervention, my specialist view was of reproducing the specialized obesity clinic in the FMG, but uh, <laughs> very soon found out that this was not something that was uh, uh, desirable. Uh, the complexity of the chronic disease management, of course, is something that is striking. Uh, in one single patient, sometimes multiple clinical practice guidelines have to be applied by the team, and this is where our work, current work is also going on uh, integrated management of cardiometabolic uh, chronic disease, and also continuous changes in organization. Uh, uh, there are external influence factors and competing priorities. When we were recruiting, there was the H1N1 epidemic. <laughs> Nobody wanted to do a research project at that time, and also turnover of personnel, etc. Though, in summary, there are multi-level influences on successful implementation, and of course, you have to plan very well the core implementation components, but also think about organizational components and other influence factors. And in closing, I'd like to acknowledge my co-investigators, research personnel, and interns, particularly uh, Dr. Jean-Patrice Bayargent, who is a co-PI on this project, and our funding and uh, partners. Thank you.